What's up, everybody? This is your boy Connie Westside, man, and I got your know, everybody's favorite cousins, <laughs> cousins, <laughs> and everybody, and your cousins, you no, know, your your auntie's favorite nephew, your grandma's favorite grandchild. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I got my boy JT with me, and like y'all been waiting for, it's Campus Connect. We here, the, man. The crew is here. Finally, right? Yes, we've been screaming it out for weeks and weeks upon weeks. And like my boy JT says, you know, the other half of Campus Connect crew, you know, he's he's excited to tell y'all what's going on, man. So, bro, we here. How you feeling? Yo, bro, it's I'm lit right now, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, it's something that we've been working on behind the scenes for a minute. You know, and, and we we didn't want to just rush to put nothing out. You know what I'm saying? We didn't want to be just a mediocre show. Like, this show is here going to be a show that's going to catapult all other shows. Mm. This is going to be your number one go-to show every Wednesday before college football starts on a Thursday. We're going to give you the inside scoop. We're going to give you the inside heat. We're going to be give you the inside pitch. We're going to be raw, uncut, doop, 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 ready to go. Fire. And like my boy said, we are going to be raw and uncut. Now, when we say uncut, you know, we're just going to be like, we're going to be keeping 100. We ain't going to like, you know what I'm saying? You ain't going to see no strippers come out. <laughs> you might. I don't know. <laughs> What's up? Hey, no, for real though, man. But this show, man, this show, not only that, we're, we're seeking to inspire, make sure that everybody, um, you already know how we do the mission statement, man. But, you know, we sit, we're seeking to inspire people and, you know, get people off of, let's, we're trying to get everybody to make sure they stay fans, but let's be realistic. And the most realistic thing right now, I have to talk about it. JT, you know, I've been I've been bombarding JT with this guys, and like it's 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 you really funny. Have. You really have. <laughs> it's funny because it's his team that we want to do. It's not this episode, but it's his team that we that we want to talk about next episode. But this episode, we gotta talk about the team that I've been bombarding him with for the longest time. Bro, drum roll, please. We are going to talk about James Franklin. In the Penn State Nifty Lions. Now, Penn State back in the day, you know, they were lying back to you, and then they got some trouble. Coach died. Program went under, but there was hope. There was a light-skinned black man that came to the rescue, bald, with a beard, glasses, and. Uh, just I don't give a crap attitude, and I'm I'm about to win. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you say. We are talking about J James Franklin. So James Franklin came in, man, and when I tell you, came in wreck shop. He came in with a, you know, with questions behind him. Oh, he's leaving Vanderbilt after three seasons. Blah blah blah. Think about what he did with Vanderbilt. Two nine win seasons. Yeah, look, man, that's hard to do. With Vanderbilt, you know what I mean. Like, like with Vanderbilt, bro. Like what he did with that program, though. Was seriously, it, it was. I don't know if another coach can actually do that in a short t time of frame. Mm -hmm. Short time frame, like he did it. Like, but it's his, it's the culture that he brings to the program. You know what right. I'm saying? Like he's going to bring a, a winning culture to the program, and it bleeds off to the other coaches. It then from the other coaches it bleeds off to the players, mm -hmm. and then that right there. That would bring that would that winning mentality was drive the recruits. Granted, you're in the Big Ten. Mm -hmm. Granted, you have Michigan, Ohio State, Wisconsin. You know what I'm saying? You, you have to compete with those schools in the Big Ten. But I really feel like Penn State this year, like that be that they will be up there. They'll be a team to be reckoned with. Are they ready to dethrone Ohio State? Not just yet. Not just yet. But I really feel like they get them around for their money this year. Well, let's look at the numbers. So here's here's what the numbers say. The past four seasons, he has posted three 11-win seasons. Not only that, beat 
Ohio State in 2016, you know, that's one of the years that, you know, he, he had – it was a nine-win season, but he beat them in a nine-win season year. Now, this is why I say this is significant because that's the only team that they got to face. That's the only team they got to get past. If they can get past uh, Ohio State consistently, they can be – Literally, they can be in this national championship talk every year. I mean, it's just one of the teams that you got to look for. I mean, let's let's look at it like this, man. Out of the six seasons, they have been uh, six seasons. Uh, John Franklin has been there. It, uh, it's three. They're three and three in bowl games. Now, keep in mind two year, two New Year sixes, two New Year sixes, man. Cotton Bowl and and uh, Rose Bowl. Fell short in the Rose Bowl because they had to play a, a play against a tough USC team. But, you know, I mean, he still came back with another 11-win season. I mean, that's that's a lot to say, man. This, oh, not only that, look, look, look. Let's look how he, let's look how he started out with Vandy. Now, he was at Vandy. He, he managed to be 24 and 15 at Vandy. Thus far, being at, uh, being at Penn State, he is 56 and 23. You know, People look at that like, oh, man, that's, that's really close. And, I, and you know, it, it can be. In hindsight, it can be. It can be. It can be a close one. But, bro, let's just let's 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 look at it how it is, man. You got yeah. a Penn State team. You're not getting the you're not getting the athletes Ohio State is getting, but you're still posting eleven wins. You know, well, you what gotta mean? think about it though. He's not getting the the athletes Ohio State is getting, but being where he's at, I think the name alone can. If he goes out and recruit. I think the name alone can 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 bring in a, a top recruits. That name like, no whole water. He was look listen. He was at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt was in the SEC. Yeah. Now tell tell me how hard it is to go to the Big Ten from the SEC. Now you, I I know I know Vanderbilt got to go against all these other SEC schools, but Vanderbilt won. Hard school to get into. You can't just be a a, a lackey off the street. So that's one. Two. They've been they've been a basketball school since forever, and he managed to get players there. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, but 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 also you know what I'm saying. He he managed to get the players there, but then are he once the players get there, are he playing them? Because you know what I'm saying. Now you got one of your safeties in the trans trans uh, for trans portal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think uh, C.J. Holmes. Like you got him into the transfer portal. So it's like, are you really? How how's his coach? Like, granted, he he produces, like he he put the good scheme week in week out, utilizing the best talent that he has. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because in the Big Ten, Harbo is gonna put the best on the field. Yeah, but he does put the best on the field. Franklin does put the best on the field. Uh. One wide receiver they just drafted, uh, they just got drafted last, uh, uh, not even like a couple months ago. He was one of the he was one of the fastest wide receivers. They got a they got a running back that's coming. They got a, they got a junior running back that's coming back for a senior year. And I understand that he got he has somebody some people going into transfer portal, but that's a lot of that's a lot of players. A lot of yeah. players going to transfer portal nowadays. They're like, you know what? I don't feel this team. Maybe I'll go somewhere else. You know what I mean? Transfer portal, transfer portal is, is is like the new free agency thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm a free agent. Let me go ahead and do whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like that's the new that's the new free agent spree. You know what I mean? So that's your question right now. Have you looked at the recruiting class? Like, where are they ranking right now in the recruiting class? No, I haven't checked that recruiting class. I have not, and I should. I should because I've been right now. I've been going off of stats, and I've been going off of what he can do. Where, so where, where are they sitting? At, where are we sitting at? Recruiting class. So, so right now, I know they, I know they landed uh, a major tight end, uh, Matthias Barnwell. Mm-hmm. Um, from when I looked at his stats from high school, he put in, put up some good numbers. Um, so what's his build? Huh? What's his build? Uh, let's see here. That I didn't get off the top. Uh, he sits two forty. Okay, okay. So, so I don't know, like you know, in high school, six five two as a tight end. Yeah, you gonna get you gonna get the ball. You are gonna be a dominant force on the field. Mm-hmm. But in college, I'm curious to see how they are gonna use him. Cause if you look at the schedule, their schedule. Let's see here. First game, obviously, they got Kent State. 
I mean, Next, obvious win. Obvious win. Next, they go to Virginia Tech. Obvious um, win. I don't I, know. I, I'm, I'm taking that. That's an obvious win. I mean, look, uh, James Franklin has too much firepower on that team to not have an obvious win going against an ACT opponent, especially the one in the, uh, in Virginia Tech. Virginia I mean, Tech, like, like, they're not consistently a good team, but they always come to fight. They're going to yeah. be better every game. If you're talking Virginia, yes, I'm, I'm going to be like, okay, Virginia, you know, these guys still got a chip on their shoulder. They still want to win. You know what I mean? They still got yeah. that quarterback coming back. Uh, uh, they still got to win. But we're talking Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech right now, they're still trying to play Beamer ball, and Beamer ball is out of style, my man. Yeah, yeah you're true. True. So, at the Virginia Tech, uh, San Jose come come to town. Uh, Northwestern, that Northwestern team, they're always a team that's they, they, they feisty. Mm-hmm. They're very feisty. So, that would be a good game to watch. Then, the fifth game of the season, mm-hmm. they go into the big house. Ooh. They go on to Michigan. All right, let me give, let me give me your thoughts on that, that Michigan game. How is that going to play out? <laughs> As my man sits and ponders, <laughs> it is I, I don't know because I really haven't looked at Michigan's roster or what Michigan is bringing to the table this year. Mm. But you know what I'm saying. I know it was Shea Paris and the quarterback left. Uh, I know mm. they lost um, a couple of offensive starters. So I don't know. I haven't really, you know, what I'm saying, been paying attention to Michigan like that this offseason. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty sure that whatever product Jim Harbaugh puts on the field is going to be competitive. Now that game will determine the rest of their season mm-hmm. because clearly you have to go to Ohio State. The Ohio State come to them, and then you never know what Michigan State is going to be like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that that game right there is going to determine that future. Well, I'm not gonna say really that future. That is going to determine if they're gonna be a, a one loss playoff team or mm-hmm. an undefeated playoff team. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because if they be if they win that game, yeah, they may beat Ohio State. They may lose to Ohio State, but at the end of the day, they still have to see Ohio State. They do. And 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 let's see, here's the thing. You okay? They go to the big house now. Let's not say let's not say that uh, J- Jim Harbaugh he doesn't have the team that shows up because keep in mind if you think two years man two years ago Sean Gray Devin Bush and a couple of the other guys from from Michigan went to the NFL Combine showed out posted four fours four fives four sixes I mean the 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 the, the talent and speed and athleticism was there they got the talent. They got they got the speed. The thing is, they don't have the. It's, I don't know it's something that they keep lacking. Now going against an Ohio State team that is straight up a track school. Them boys run. Them boys are athletic. Them boys are in there. They're like, hey man, look. Oh, you think it's a game? These guys are athletic. The type of athlete that come to Ohio State. Yes, we know we need to. We know we need to figure that out. But I do. I, 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 tr- I I'm trusting in James Franklin and his system because what it, what it, what he's showing me if I can consistently get I have consistently posted 11 wins 11 wins let me get over this hump and it's not like and it's not like they don't give Ohio State a problem it's not like they don't give Ohio State a problem, Ohio State a problem every year every year every year run for their money Ohio State finds a crazy way to get out of, get out of that house. Finds a crazy way to get out of, of losing a game. Who else is on that schedule, man? Um. So after Michigan, they got a bye week. Then they um. Iowa come to town. Ohio State come to that come to town. Um. Indi- they go to Indiana. They go to Nebraska. Michigan State come to town. Maryland come to town and then they wrap up the season at records. All right, so boom, the rest of the, I mean it's a winnable it's a winnable schedule. You know what I mean? Me personally, I see one loss on that schedule. Um, right now, I just see one from one loss on the schedule. And so, so just you know, what I'm saying, not doing research on Michigan, not doing research on Michigan State. I, I'm gonna say, say possible two loss, two loss. Yeah, I, I don't see them being Michigan because I, I just feel like Jim Harbaugh is going to prepare them. That's five games in. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like that's game number five y'all playing. I really feel like 
they'll be at a point where they'll be able to dissect and, and, and beat Penn State. But like I said, I don't know what Penn State is going to bring to the table because looking at Penn State's depth chart, so you're going to have Sean Clifford uh, probably be going to be the starter because he's a junior. Right. Um, your running back, you got Journey Brown and Noah Kane um, and Devin Ford. Now, I, I heard a lot about that kid, Devin Ford. Mm. Or he's going to be a big. Yeah, man. Uh, Devin Ford, one 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 amazing athlete, one one amazing talent, bro, for real. Yeah, and then you gonna have receivers. You gonna have Daniel George, uh, Cam Sullivan Brown, and Kendra. Wait, Andre Lambert Smith, but he's a true freshman. Now, they they have high hopes for that kid. Mm-hmm. They, he can possibly do it for them, from what I've read. But you know what I'm saying. And I looked at his, some of his his high school film. Bro, bro's legit. You know. Mistaken, he is um, to do so. He, he was a four star recruit. Um, mm-hmm. to do he don't he don't give his uh, his height or anything when I do, do more research, but so so he has a good frame. Um, he's 195. He right. weighs 195. They say he's explosive. Like he's he get in and out of his routes very well. Has mm-hmm. amazing hands. Like he, they say his body control is is really good for a young player that of that caliber. So I feel like if he comes in and can practice and you know what I'm saying really get the reps in at practice, mm-hmm. he can possibly be a, a, a game changer. So that's part of that depth chart. Um, let me see. Um. You got Johan Dotson. Now that kid is nice. Dotson, mm-hmm. like he was, he's a, he's a, he's a true stud. Right. Um, T.J. Jones, they got they got a lot of receivers they can go with. You know what I'm saying? So I'm really interested in see how they use the skilled players in in certain positions, mm-hmm. certain certain schemes, certain roles of the game. Like who's gonna be that go to guy this year? You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I, I feel like it's gonna be uh, Johan Dotson. Like. Yeah. Bros had a good season last year. Um, some of his stats last year was uh, um, put them up. So last season, stat wise, he produced. He had uh, twenty seven catches, four hundred eighty eight yards, five touchdowns. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he he off him last season. This year he'll be a junior. Okay. But I, I feel like you know this will be a, a kind of a breakout year for him. He had he has the reps uh, behind him, so so this could be a possible game changer for them. You know what I'm saying? Because he's yeah. been in the trenches. He's been in the big games. Like for instance, um, let me see some of his, his stats here. Oh, he's versatile. By the way, they used him in uh, rushing attempts. He had a couple of rushing attempts. Mm-hmm. Um, do, 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 do. He uh, against Buffalo. Granted, Buffalo is a mid-major team. He had four catches, 109 yards. Um, against Michigan, he had one catch, 37 yards. But granted, that was against Michigan. You know what I'm saying? As a sophomore, yeah, the upper class is going to really be heen in. You know what I'm saying? To mm-hmm. kind of sort of those reps. Mm-hmm. But based off this, bro, I think he, he's going to be a solid player for him. Um, mm-hmm. Penn State on paper looks like a solid team. Right. I mean, on paper, yes. And you know, and look, let's, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. You know what I'm saying? We are putting hopes into a guy that, for some reason, college football world will say he's still untested. I mean, to me, he he battled through, posted 11 wins consistently. I I mean, I, I gotta get the guy to okay. All right. So, guys, that's the first episode, man. Thank you, man. Um. We're going to continue on. Uh, we're going to continue on next time. Next episode, we're going to get in depth about them Florida Gators because it's going down in the swamp. This is your boy, Connie Westside. And it's your favorite cousin's cousin, JT, man. We out. <laughs>